pleasure. All right, shall I let them all in? Yeah. Good in everyone. We're just waiting for one or two more people to join us. If you'd like to say hello in the chat box or if you can put your sound on, just say hello quickly to us. How's it, Charlotte? Kieran from Northern KZN. How are you doing? Hi, Karen. How are you? I'm good, thank you. All good. Looking forward to tonight. <laughs> thank you. Thanks very much. Welcome to others who've just joined us. Cindy, Christine, Bruce. If you want to chat in the um, chat box, Hi. just to see who Hello, Cindy. Hello, hello. Thanks for the timing, lady. <laughs> <laughs> I rushed back from Tales River. Oh, and then you had time to relax and gather yourself. No, no. Do I ever relax? Hello, Bruce. Welcome. Hi, Charlotte. Made it. You won't know what day it is, Bruce. <laughs> One of those days. <laughs> Don't worry. I I'm going to be taken in as well. It took me hours to work it out. Hi, Roger. Hi, Melanie. How are you? How's it, Charlotte? Hi, everyone. Good. Who's on Galaxy J5 Prime? Not you me. want to just type in the text box and say hello, and then we'll know who you are. Hi, Granny B. How are you? Good thing. <laughs> how are you? Namibia as well. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jeff, join us. Hello, Jeff. Hello, sir. Just put in your dog's head. Come on. All right. We're going to mute Bruce so that we don't um, to, um, take care of his dogs. All right. I'm going to give him one more minute and then we're going to get started. Who's that on Galaxy Prime? I think it's the Sunder. This is Sunder. <laughs> 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 yes, it's me, Charlotte. <laughs> you go. I've renamed you Sisanda, so we know who you are. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to get started. We are recording this, so, you know, standard rules apply. Don't say anything that you don't want to have uh, shared all over Facebook and YouTube and everywhere else. There we go. I've just muted everybody. We still have one or two people joining us. I'm just trying to get uh, Karina in here. Sorry, just one second. I'm just trying to get someone in. There we go. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to get started. A very big thank you uh, to uh, Bran van Avestesen from PSA Namibia. He's in Swakopmund and he's running a very interesting creativity week. And uh, just as we end, he'll tell us a little bit more about that. This is not going to be a long session. It's just shy of 40 minutes and just enough to talk about some, um, some creativity issues. But particularly from, from my perspective, uh, Brian just asked me to talk about, you know, as a futurist, how do we view the uh, creativity as, as a skill set or a value? Uh, what can we do with it? And a very exciting opportunity to speak about this because it, it really turns out that creativity is something that for a lot of us, we think of as something belonging to people who are artistic. And I think we really need to reclaim creativity as an essential human skill that we need to develop if we want to be relevant into the future. So we need to kind of take creativity mainstream and stop thinking that it's all about, you know, artists and bohemians and people living in, in communes who are creating amazing things. I cannot draw stick figures that aren't embarrassing. I mean, my, I, I've got zero artistic skill but I am a very creative person. And that's the kind of uh, thing that we're trying to explore here. So we're going to just go through a four very brief questions, the kind of who, what, why, 
um, how methods of, of creativity in terms of this. And, and you'll remember the title of the speech is about uh, creativity being a, a human skill and rising above the robots. And why we're looking at it that way is to say that for so much of, so, so many functions in a lot of our jobs going into the future, as we get better with artificial intelligence, with robotics, with automation, uh, with um, all of those artificial intelligence tool sets and algorithms, a lot of the repetitive work that humans do can be handed over to the machines. The machines can think faster um, more correctly, more analytically, and they can be stronger and they can do a whole lot of things that we don't have to do. And for some people that makes them feel like we are redundant or we're becoming irrelevant. And I want to suggest that it actually frees us up to really explore the creativity of a human and what we, what we are uniquely positioned to do. So uh, artificial intelligence can calculate things really, really well, but it can't be creative. It can't do those kind of, um, adjacent ideas to something that we're doing and come up with something brand new. And that's what we want to explore. So I'm going to start and then I don't want us to, you know, for me to do all the talking here. So we're going to share with us and I'm going to ask you to start with in the, um, in the message box, just to give us a bit of a definition of what you think creativity is. So if I can ask you, please just to type into the message box, what do you think creativity is a definition or an example or a way that you like to look at creativity? and we'll see who's got some responses. So in the text box, if you haven't found it, if you hover down at the bottom, you'll find that the, the, the chat box, you can type in there. So Karen says lateral thinking, Christine says curiosity, very good. Creativity is the way we look and perceive the world. I'm gonna make sure I can see this better. Uh, oh, shame, Melanie. Everything you're not, you are creative. We'll find a way to prove it to you. Uh, Roger, the ability to dig into your own resourcefulness. Very good. The ability to create something new, to be able to do something different from normal. Um, the way we look and perceive the world. Creativity is being able to see the obvious in a different way. Very good. Are we, are we apart from uh, Melanie, who's, who's confessing that she doesn't feel creative, do, do you feel creative or do you not feel creative? So just say, um, maybe on a scale of one to 10, one being not creative, being a, a, maybe an accountant or an internal auditor. I know I'm going to be in trouble for that. And then 10 has been like a, a, like a fully artistic person, 12 front, way to go, all the way. <laughs> uh, Granny B, eight, we got eights. Um, five for Jafta, good. Any more responses? Melanie's a three. All right, we're really going to have to work on that nearly. <laughs> Five. Oh, um, I, I didn't mean to insult you, Karine. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is just a little bit of a joke, but um, all, the only thing we don't want from accountants is too much creative accounting because then, you know, um, we have all this fraud and, and uh, all these issues that we have to deal with right now. So Bruce Page is a 9.576, very, very precise, creative person. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm going to share um, a slide share with you just to look at one or two images. Do that. All right, so we're going to start with a kind of a definition. That's what we're looking at with uh, creativity. What is creativity? And two of the things that I want us to look at in terms of building our own futures and rising above the machines is these two issues of problem solving and innovation. And that's how we start to take uh, creativity mainstream, is that we say it's not just an artistic ability, but it is a way of looking at problems. So even our most analytical of, of colleagues, uh, those of you who are feeling like that you're down by a five or a three, uh, if you have to solve problems in the workplace, if you have to solve problems with your colleagues, if you have to solve problems in your home with your children, um, then you are actually being creative. And we want us to recognize that and tap into it. And then we also want to explore innovation because in, in so many different parts of business, innovation becomes an incredibly valuable skill for the future. And innovation doesn't mean coming up with a new product to sell to somebody. Innovation could be um, doing something creative or interesting or different with your sales technique 
or with your procurement technique uh, or uh, an HR practice or finding a new system or a new method of doing something in the workplace or even at home. So we need to uh, think of everything that we do automatically, a lot of things that we do by uh, routine. Let's stop and have a look and play around those ideas and see how we can actually turn them into something uh, more creative. The next thing we want to look at is why do we want to do this? Well, first of all, and we've mentioned this, being creative is a uniquely human skill. Uh, the machines cannot do this. Um, they, they, um, they may be able to, uh, you know, take in some algorithms, make a piece of art or make some music or write some poems and, and they're playing around with that. But the thing that, that delights us in terms of creativity, that is what makes it uh, really human. And, and when we discover something that is creative, we know that we're moved and we're encouraged, um, that, that we, we find delight in something that is otherwise mundane and ordinary or come, we've come to expect it. And uh, it solves problems. It solves so many problems, like we've already said, even the, the normal kind of technical issues that we're trying to wrestle with, creativity can address them. So while we're asking the machines and the algorithms to make things better, faster, more efficient, more accurate, we're the ones who come up with new ways of doing something, new ways of being, new ways of experiencing, and that is creativity. So I want you to keep the, challenge yourself uh, constantly in terms of, you know, I've just gone through a whole day. Let's pick up two or three things today that I've done that could be done differently. Um, how about how I make my breakfast or how about how I respond to uh, my emails or how about uh, my social media posts? How can I kind of play around with this and every day find those things that, that you can look at um, in, a, in a different way. And then you're going to start to, to realize that creativity can be expressed in so many different places. We also have to ask the question, who is creative um, and who wants us to be creative? And of course, we have all those studies. Um, we've got one back here from 1968 is the kind of landmark study that they did. Uh, a man, um, studied thousands of, of young children and grown-ups trying to really un understand how creativity worked. And he said, and I'm not quite sure how his metric worked, but he said um, the, the creativity scale in children is 98%. Uh, but after we've gone through normal schooling and we've got qualified in some area, we end up being uh, at 2%. Our creativity scale is down to 2%. Now, first of all, you have to understand that in context, when cr creativity is creating... Uh, un unexpected kind of neural connections between different parts of our brains, uh, seeing something in a magazine, then walking on the beach and, and looking at something and then thinking about a problem you had in the office four days ago and putting those strange things together, watching a movie, um, looking at a meme on Facebook, all of a sudden you get an insight into something that you were thinking about last week. That is the, the kind of bizarre messiness of creativity. Our whole school system and everything else that we do uh, in order to actually function as human beings in the world and not to be savages like our gorgeous little children are, um, everything that we're learning is about being rule-based and, and, and functioning properly in a society. We, we cannot be creative in terms of driving because we have to follow the rules. We cannot be creative in terms of our financial practices because we have to follow the rules. We have to pay taxes and we have to declare inf uh, certain information. We cannot be uh, creative in terms of you know, shopping because we actually have to buy things and pay for things and, and there has to be a certain system of, of how money moves around. Otherwise, it's fraud. So there are a lot of rules that help us as, as human beings um, to kind of rub up against each other in a public place and, and not you know, cause offense or cause drama. So those rules are necessary. So a, a lot of it is, is being rule-based and then still finding ways to be creative. And for some people, they get, they get lazy about how they think and they just fall into that rule-based function and they stay there. They don't move beyond that. And so, you know, exercises like Brunch is doing um, this week and, and, and creativity weeks and creativity days and exercises like that in the, in the workplace are because we, we're, we're trying to grapple with the fact that maybe too many of us have become too rule-based and too functioning and we really need to escape from that. We really need to start uh, playing around with rediscovering our creativity and what we can do with that. And that's really, really important. So I'm going, uh, we've got some of the people who haven't come into the room yet. There we go. Welcome, Colin. So 
something else that I want to, um, that we actually want to move on to is to say what, um, sorry, we have people in the waiting room. I'm just sending them back in. There you go. So what we now want to look at is if we kind of like know the, uh, the, the what it is and, and why and uh, things like that about being creative, we need to explore how we can become creative or tap into our creativity, especially if we operate in a more um, functional world where, where creativity is not our natural expression. Um, so I'm going to ask you to, to suggest to me some ways, and we can do this again in the chat box, and uh, maybe we can, uh, if you want to speak, then just either raise your hand physically or raise your hand electronically and you can actually um, answer us. But what are some of the ways that you think you could create creativity in yourself? How can you learn creativity? How can you express it? How can you explore it? And I'm going to ask you to either tell us verbally or in the chat box. Who wants to start? Maybe, Brand, do you want to kick off with something and, and let us know? And you can speak if you want to. Brand, talk to new people. All right, so we got communication um, with, with other people that are not our normal close uh, friends. Roger is, have you faith in yourself and take action? Roger, what kind of action would you be taking? Who wants to speak? Melanie? Yeah, so the other day I did a course with a lady who's a writer. And before we started doing things, she actually gave us a big sheet of paper with big circles in it. And she said to us, use yeah. those circles and actually create something in there. Just to start getting your head into, oh, what can I create? Before we went into this writing thing. And that was quite fun. Okay, very good. So you just, you just had a circle, you just were kind of playing around with creative ideas. Yeah. How many things could you put in the circle in 30 seconds? And what could you make out of that circle? And everyone had such randomly different things. So it was quite, was quite a fun exercise. Very good. All right. Uh, Jeff just says, ask questions differently. Bruce is saying, um, think using a different kind of language. That's very good. Uh, Roger, anything that moves you towards a new environment? Brunt, again, this is the, uh, uh, oh, your circle is a test of creative fluency. Um, Christine, that's so interesting. Don't respond with your initial gut feeling. And, and you know why that's important? Somebody was saying, when, whenever we face a problem, um, our first response, Cindy, I'll come to you now. Our first response, our first thought about that problem is something that somebody already has, has thought of. It's something we've heard or we've read. So we already know this. Um, so we need to say, well, this is my first response. Now, what comes after that? And then challenge yourself. What, what could I do after that? Keep thinking. Don't, don't think you've found the answer. Keep pushing yourself beyond that because then you'll start to explore some of, some of the other answers. Now, that again is something that artificial intelligence is not going to do. It's going to know what the answer is and it's going to apply it. It's not going to think, well, this is a perfectly good solution. It will solve the problem. I'm going to carry on thinking about it. It won't do that. It'll stop. So it's that uniquely human skill set that says, um, I've solved the problem, but maybe there's still a different way to do it. So if, if, you, if you're wrestling with anything, that is your challenge for the next uh, seven days. You're wrestling with anything and, and you've, come up with a solution and you're about to implement it, I want you to pause and think, I wonder if there's some other solution after this that I could try instead. We're going to hear from Cindy. Cindy, do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, thank you. Um, I found that if I want to try something new, I will thrash it out of my own head and then I'll put it to somebody else who is, who's got a similar sort of thought pattern as what I have. And I'll find somebody that's a little bit more creative than me thinking wise and I'll put it to them and I'll find that um, between the two of us, we'll, we'll be able to come to a, um, a decision of what is going to work. I'll give it a try. If it works, it works. And um, I just found out lately as well, I've tried something new on LinkedIn to connect to people um, on the message side of things, connecting directly with them. And I've actually post, I've, I've written something and I've posted a picture along with it. And it, I've been getting, I've been, people have been responding to that. 
Um, so yes, I just keep, I constantly try something new until I find something that does work and I'm not shy to try. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. Not shy to try. Uh, keep experimenting, try different ways of communicating the same information. Uh, Colin Horner says the breakthrough uh, for him came in, he came when, when he draws pictures. And uh, if any of you haven't encountered Colin Horner before, he, uh, he illustrates uh, a lot of the meetings that he attends. And his illustrations are his way of note-taking, but they also are um, for somebody else to see a picture that he's drawn. Sonny, you know, creates that, 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 that delight. Um, and makes a connection in, in our own brain so that we can remember it better. So that whole visual element is so important. So Sandra talks about learning through collaboration. Um, and Cindy also talked about that, just bouncing an idea off somebody else and seeing what, what you can do. Um, a lot of this is, is putting together um, different, different people, different thought patterns, different approaches, or putting together one idea with something else entirely. There's another exercise that I'm not going to play with now, and, and I'm sure Brian knows this one. But um, it's uh, about a, a cat and a fridge. And um, you draw two columns and you, you list all the things about a cat and a fridge that are the same, okay? So uh, a cat is white, a fridge is white. A cat gives you comfort, a fridge can give you comfort, all right? And then all the ways that they're different, you know, a cat and a fridge, a cat is alive, a fridge is dead. Um, a cat can be warm, a, cat, a fridge is cold. But you play around with those things and all of a sudden you're creating these, I mean, when you start, you're thinking that's ridiculous, why would we, you know, why are we comparing a cat and fridge? But you're forcing your brain to think about that. And once you've thought about that, then you can look at, um, I have a problem at work with an HR function and I go and I watch sports over the weekend. And then I start thinking, how does the team connect and how does it apply to work? Or I go for a walk in the garden and, and I'm looking at how the plants grow and there are different kinds of plants growing in the same environment. How does it apply to work? So you keep kind of putting these, these different things together. Um, and, and again, I know I'm, I'm kind of emphasizing this, but this is a uniquely human skill um, that, that we have to develop. Creativity is not, yes, we all have it as children and we can get it knocked out of ourselves, but we can bring it back. It is a skill set that we should, be, uh, we should be wrestling with. Now, I want to just give you some insights. Uh, I follow a podcast called um, uh, the accidental creative. It's by a guy, by a guy called Todd Henry. I'll just write it here for you. So just um, Google his name and look for his podcast, the accidental creative. And, and I'm just going to kind of wrap up with some of these insights because I listen to this um, almost every week. He's got a podcast out. He interviews some people, but he also talks about creativity and he talks about intentional creative play um, and non-necessary, unnecessary creating. So for example, if Colin is, is an artist, he draws things and he's very good at that. And, and, and I'm a little bit envious of, of his talent because I know that I can't draw in that way. And maybe that's just my own limitation and I should explore it. But if Colin wanted to, to develop his creativity, Colin should be creative in a different space. He should on purpose do something totally different like pottery or crochet. All right, just off the top of my head, some, some actual physical hobby um, something that is different from what he does. And, and the point is not to be good at this. Thank you very much, Colin. Not to be good at this, but to experience creativity in a different space because then you develop that creative muscle. Uh, you actually need to, um, to, to put time aside to develop creativity. So a number of us uh, in, in this meeting are, are speakers, professional speakers, and if you want to be creative on stage, if you want to do something that is different so that you're not just lumped with all the other speakers who do things the same way all the time, then you need to practice creativity and be a little bit of a risk taker so that you can try something new. Um, we set something on fire on stage over the weekend, um, and it's something that we would never have done before if we hadn't practiced creativity beforehand. If you want your creative muscle to really work, then you also need to prune some energy. So, so if there are lots of projects on your mind, or if there are lots of things that you haven't dealt with, things that, uh, you know, like that conversation that you have to have with somebody that you don't want to, um, the kind of uh, decision that you have to make that you keep putting off, you actually need to spend some time and do those things so that mentally you can close those loops in your, in your brain. And then you say, for the next two hours, I'm just going to creatively explore either this skill set, I'm going to play around with this, or I'm going to creatively explore this idea. Like maybe I want to do something new in my business, or I want a new marketing approach, 
or I want to find a new way to connect with somebody on LinkedIn. And, and that's my problem for the next two hours. I'm just going to think about that. And then you go and look at other places, do other things. But you have that one problem that you're focused on. But it's not going to work if you know that you have to send an email to somebody or you have to apologize to somebody or you have to make a decision about something else. So get those ideas out of the way so that your brain is actually free to do this. Um, it's a lot of energy that is required in creativity. So give yourself, pardon me, that space. And I just want to return to that uh, circle that uh, Christine mentioned. Um, a lot of people, when they think about creativity, think that it is free, that there are no boundaries, that we can do anything with, with creativity. But real creativity comes when we've got very well-defined boundaries. And that's why it's such an incredible business skill. So, you know, you could wake up on a Monday morning with no job and, you know, no responsibilities and no appointments. Um, you're not going to be very creative. You, you, you don't know what you want to do. You actually have to... Um, you have to encounter something that you're going to be creative about. So if you don't have a creative project that you have to have, then find something that you want to play with and give yourself artificial boundaries. Uh, say that you have to, um, you have to do this in, um, uh, you have to do this in, in 35 minutes and you have to, um, or you have to do this 10 different ways or you find some, some kind of artificial boundaries for yourself that, so that you can really explore it. But think about how that works when you ask somebody else to be creative. So, um, and we do this a lot. Uh, we're always coming up with projects and we've got a, 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 um, a new website or something and we, we want a logo. So we go to a creative person who can draw really well. We think that's it, they can create a logo. And we say, this is the name of our business or our project. Please give us a logo. And the person comes back with a logo because we've given him no brief at all. We've just said we want a logo and this is the name. And they come up with something which in their mind makes sense. We look at it and go, well, no, that's not what we wanted. Um, so we, we, we never stop to actually express what we want. Now, if we go to a creative professional and we say, this is the logo and the color scheme, and this is the feeling that I want people to have when they look at it. I want them to be inspired, or I want them to be focused, or I want them to be curious. You know, we give them those kind of sensations and we tell them you know, some of our background and something of, of what we actually want the, the viewer to say, we play around with all of that. And when you really give a very tight brief, then you find out who's creative, who can actually come up with something that fills that, that is delightful to us when we see it, and that when our, our clients or our viewers see it, that they know immediately what, what we're trying to achieve. And that is a, a creative brief. So as you're trying to develop your creativity, you want to you do that to yourself. You want to give yourself some artificial... Um, constraints you know what goes into the circle what goes out of the circle how many can you do in 30 minutes or can you achieve this in 30 minutes uh, Todd Henry talks about a project and I'm not sure whose it was but the idea was and I don't know why skulls are a creative expression but you're always finding them in various places but like the human skull and and he had to this person who did this project had to create an artistic expression of a skull every day for a year that's 365 skulls. Uh, it could be painted. It could be modeled out of clay. It could be modeled out of Play-Doh. Um, it could be uh, baked as a cake. It could be iced onto a cake. It could be um, uh, computer generated. You know, it, it didn't matter. But every single day, he had to create a skull of some kind and use different medium. And it wasn't media. It wasn't meant to be his best work was meant to challenge him like if, if he really is a creative professional how many different ways can he express this one thing and that is something that we should do so we we keep defaulting to our, our diaries our calendars are full we have to produce something we have to do another speech or a toastmaster speech or we have to do some sort of work at, at uh, you know in the office and we keep doing what we've done before so you need to create that constraint for yourself and say i've, I've done this a hundred times already now, here's what, what this project looks like. And every time I do it, I'm going to change one element. I'm going to do it faster. I'm going to do it more colorful. I'm going to do it without this, or I'm going to add that in. Whatever it is, define your project for yourself. And then give yourself those, those new constraints and new challenges so that you can keep expressing yourself in new ways. Um, I think that is you know, one of the most important 
important ways that we can really develop our creativity. So it's about um, being structured and not just thinking that creativity is, is, is absolute freedom to create anything, because then we never would. Um, that, that's not creativity. Uh, if you really want to do this, you, you want to put time in your calendar and, and give yourself permission to play. Um, children play, that's how they create those neural connections. And that's how they come up with new things and they ask the most bizarre, ridiculous questions and their fantasies are utterly unreal because they don't have constraints. We need constraints to exist in the world, but we can also challenge those and, and find new ways of, of, of doing something and then find a way to bring it back um, to, to the workplace. Uh, so that last slide that I showed you was talking about who wants, you know, who do we need to think about in terms of creativity? And it really is the CEOs. It's the leaders of businesses saying, we have to have something creative happening here. We have to fi find new ways of doing things. So that's why we want to really pull creativity into the mainstream and start talking about this in, in boardrooms and offices and, you know, uh, police departments, because this is not something that is, uh, relegated to kind of the, the people on the fringes of our society that we all admire and wish we could be like. Um, this is something that we all need to express. All right, I think we, we may have two or three minutes left. If there are any questions that anybody wants to ask or pop into the chat box or raise your hand and ask us. Anyone? Uh, Bruce, yes, please tell us. Can you unmute yourself? Shauna? Um one of the things that always bothered me a little bit about uh, discussions about creativity is that we sometimes become quite restricted in the languages. Of, uh, in the chat, I, I said one way of being creative is to speak different languages. But when you think about, uh, and I don't mean like French and German and Italian and things like that. We, the way that we communicate with each other is through the spoken word. We communicate with mathematics. We communicate with dance, with art, with plays, all of those kind of things. And yet I see so few people, for instance, saying, okay, I've got a problem on how global warming is going to influence the economy of Durban. But nobody wants to explore creativity by dancing out that problem or by having a play on that problem. And because we are actually, you, you mentioned about children and what they were doing. I challenged a, a group of guys a little while ago to talk about the global warming problem in dance. And it's, it, it actually is incredible when you start thinking about how, what the problems are and how you can choreograph expressing those problems by moving your body in particular ways. It does make your mind think. And I think our creativity is still too restrictive sometimes. I mean, everybody's mentioned art. That's an easy way of doing it, is sitting down and drawing a picture. That's just yeah. one way of doing it. You need to do lots yeah. more, dancing it. I want to see more dance. That's excellent, Bruce. I mean, and, and it's fascinating that you could put those kind of things together, but that's exactly the point, is uh, those kind of adjacent ideas and, and those non-expected uh, connections that is where we, we get that, that spark of creativity. We literally, literally create new neural connections when we see a, a, a normal problem expressed in a different way. That's why storytelling is so good. And, and in this case, dance as well works because we get past all of those logical constraints that we have. Like we've heard this before, so we want to do something different. Granny B, I'll get you now. Let's hear from Jafta quickly. Jafta, do you want to unmute yourself? Thank you, Charlotte, and thank you, everyone. Yeah, I used to think of myself not to be a person with uh, creative abilities, but today I was doing questions for students. Then I was thought of doing it differently, and, and I thought I have a little bit of creativity in the how I ask the questions today. Thank you. Very good. I'm so glad. Yeah, so you really want to dive into that, own it, explore it. Granny B, let's hear your question. I actually just want to say that for myself, I'm a very positive person. So if anything happens, I always find a million ways how to do it and how to be able to approach something. And I find that it's important for me to be creative and also things think, well, how can it not work? And that's why, you know, the six thinking hats, which make you, they force you to approach whatever you're busy with from different angles, other than who you are as a person. And I find that that produces creativity much more than just constantly thinking along the person of who I am. 
That's so, that's so good. So you, you take the problem and you intentionally have a set of approaches to look at it in a different way. Very, very good. Um, yeah, you know, when it comes to, to creativity, it's not just about, you know, making things, it's finding those, those different solutions and different approaches. Very powerful. Um, let us just hear, uh, Brian, do you want to say anything in um, kind of as we wrap up? Um, yes, so Brunt has texted here, Edward DeBona, six thinking hats is a brainstorming technique similar to scamper or spread. So yes, there, there are tons of techniques and we haven't gone into, I mean, that, that's, um, you know, far too much for today's conversation, but lots of techniques that we can explore to, um, to, to apply creativity. Um, Brunt, anything you want to just add about your creative week that you're doing in, in Swakopmund? Thanks, Charlotte. Yeah, so this is the entire week celebrating creativity and innovation. It's a global thing and it is important. And I think everybody here recognizes that we can't just keep on saying that we need to be an innovative company when we've got no clue what that actually means. And the fact is you can't be innovative if you're not creative first. You can't implement an idea if you didn't come up with an idea first, you didn't make that connection. So this is all about expressing different ideas, talking to new people, making different connections and exploring how we can all be creative and how we can retrain ourselves to unlock our creative nature. Fantastic. Brian, thank you very much. All right, folks, um, it's been a delight chatting with you. Um, and, and I'm going to just kind of reiterate my challenge to you that um, throughout this next week, whenever you encounter a problem, don't look at your first solution. Don't look at your first kind of gut reaction. Uh, because you'll just be repeating what people have done before. Uh, if you want to really be a creative individual uh, in any work that you do, then look at that problem, take a deep breath, and look for the second part of the problem, you know, the, the, the second solution, the third solution, a different way of doing it. Um, find different ways to express whatever your issues are that you can, or your challenges, that you can get past those um, those, those initial constraints that other people have. When you're trying to collaborate, how can you collaborate in a way that overcomes the, the, the natural frictions between people? And uh, then you'll also be creative and uh, we can all rise above the machines. Uh, but to that end, the machines, the artificial intelligence, these are not actually our enemies. Um, they're designed to make our lives better. So let's, let's let other people uh, do the work that they're best designed for, let the machines do the work that they're designed for, so that we can come up with solutions and creativity and innovation and, and, and discovery that we are uniquely designed to do. And, uh, and then we'll all be far more satisfied as creative individuals. And you can all raise your scores um, to that, you know, 8, 9, 10, 12, 20 out of 10, why not? Um, because that's the kind of people we are. Thank you very much. And, and thank you again to Brunt for allowing me to participate in this. I really had a wonderful time. Thank you. All right, any last comments in the chat box as we wrap up? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you everybody. Good night. <laughs>